Greetings, so if this may concern, Christian Aguilar here, back with another movie review. And in today's movie review, I'm going to be reviewing The Killing of Kenneth Chamberlain. This film recently came out on HBO Max on my birthday, November 19th, so sometime this past month, but it made its original debut in film festivals back in 2019. The film stars Frankie Faison, Steve O'Connell, Enrico Natale, Ben Martin, and Angela Peel. And the film is a reenactment of the true events that happened on November 19th in 2011. Three upstate New York police officers get a medical emergency alert from their dispatch that informs them that an elderly man named Kenneth Chamberlain needs a medical assistance. And upon arriving to his apartment building, they find that he is saying that he's okay. He doesn't need any help. He's totally fine and that the medical alert was an accident. However, these three persistent officers just cannot leave the scene without actually checking up on him and seeing if he's okay. And with Kenneth repeatedly saying that he is okay and the officers not believing him, this begins the back and forth altercation between Kenneth and the cops that unfortunately leads to his demise. Now, I am not one to get political on my channel. I did not set out to get political, but the ongoing race violence that is happening in America, especially when it comes to individuals that are supposed to be uh, people that we look up to, the authority, you know, these are supposed to be our heroes, but they don't treat the people with respect. And this is an ongoing issue that this film brings up. And this is one of several incidences that happens in this country. And unfortunately, this is the reality we live in. It's unfortunate that I don't remember hearing a lot about this on the news, uh, this whole particular situation with Kenneth uh, Chamberlain. And it just felt like it was really swept underneath the rug and the only way anyone would ever know about this incident is from this film which again is streaming on HBO Max and when I sat down to watch this with my parents one thing was very apparent that this movie was doing it made you go on an anxiety ride I mean there is no slowing down with this movie like talk about pacing it just keeps revving up and your anxiety never ceases to drop. As an audience member, you always feel like you're on guard, you know? You're with you're with Kenneth in his situation. And with Kenneth being a US veteran, he's suffering with a lot of illnesses and mental disorders. So having these three officers trying to force their way into his apartment, it's gonna be a very high anxiety ride for the viewer. I mean, we are on his side for all of it. And it is a very, very nail-biting experience. You know what's going to happen, and it's all about seeing it play out. And with that knowledge, you can't help but be put on the edge throughout this entire movie. The movie succeeds in making you feel off, making you feel like you're in the situation, and I really admire that about this film. The performances in this film or top notch. Typically in these independent films, a lot of the performances could vary, but in this film, they are all very, very strong. I mean, from the talents that performed the uh, police officers, they were amazing because they played the assholes. They were the antagonists, right? And they really made you feel like they were that. And they were just, they were just perfect for those roles. Same thing with Frankie Faison who plays Kenneth Chamberlain. He is portraying someone with mental disorders and it's very, very easy for a performer to overact when it comes to uh, performing someone with disorders. I don't think that was the case here. I think he really sold his distress and really sold that this guy is basically being pinned up in a corner, you know? And he has really nowhere to go from here and he has no one to turn to really. Every cry for help leads him to no avail. And that's very, very dreadful. This movie feels very dreadful, very much a satire for sure. There was hardly a music score, if I can remember. There might have been a music score, but I don't remember a lot of use of music, which also gives the feeling of being uneased, you know, being put on edge. You're not, you're not hearing any music to really guide you along and to really make it feel like, oh, it's a movie. No, this is real life. And if you're in this situation, there's no musical score to go along with, with your experience. But what is apparent is the sound design. I really admire the sound design, especially when it comes to uh, Kenneth's hearing aids in the movie, whenever there's any loud bangs, because he has a steel door for a front door, which is what they're trying to get through steel door is not not that easy to get off the hinges and stuff so it's like they're trying to knock down a wall it's like they're trying to knock down a big barricade and they just can't get through it so every loud bang is going to hurt kenneth's ears plus him being in war 
all those explosions we don't know if he's shell-shocked he might have PTSD so there's a lot of there's a lot of shit going on with Kenneth and you got to approach this very delicately very cautiously but these guys just throw that out the window and they use extreme violent excessive force and there's just a point in the movie where you the viewer are probably gonna say like all right this is enough I feel like there should have been more that could have been done and that is the truth that's the sad reality there was tons more that could have been done but sadly it wasn't you know people weren't being heard people were being ignored neglected and that just isn't apparent in this case that's happening all around the country maybe all around the world all these injustices that happened and this movie documents one of many injustices very very well again i did not know anything about this event that happened i mean this is what it happened back in 2011 so like 10 or 11 years now um that's that's insane to know that none of the police officers got uh charged or they really faced a trial for what they did is really really um i, I don't know how to i don't know how to put this lightly it really pisses me the f off and i think it'll piss you the f off if you watch this movie and you because this movie just i mean again high anxiety throughout the entire thing it is like a roller coaster ride of anxiety i like to compare the pacing to this to uncut gems a lot of choppy editing quick handheld movements to make you really feel on the edge kind of borderline nauseous because to be honest if you were in any of these intense situations you would feel nauseous you'd feel just like terrible you know and i love how the movie portrays that really well the only negative thing i have towards this movie which is a personal nitpick this might you know it's very understandable why they did this but i just i feel like it would have in made it a little more dreadful if it really needed to be it's still very much dreadful but i think it would have been a little more dreadful if we didn't have one of the police officers that we can sympathize with there was a police officer in this movie i think that's played by uh enrico natalie uh good performance great performance however i just couldn't help but wonder was there actually a sympathetic police officer on site when this happened because if that were the case, I would think they would have called dispatch on what's happening and this thing would have been wrapped up way sooner. But again, it's a lot of, you know, woulda, coulda, shoulda when everything's said and done, right? But again, I just couldn't help but wonder, was there anyone sympathetic on site that night? And when my mother did some research after we watched the movie and she was reading out all these facts and articles about what actually happened, learned that there really wasn't anyone sympathetic on, on on site and all police officers were really to blame that night and that's very heartbreaking that's that is very heartbreaking and very very sad and makes it that much more dreadful and i think if the movie went that route and did not have kind of like a a good cop amongst all these bad cops and they were just all bad cops i think that would have been a way more accurate portrayal but i guess we the audience has to have someone to gravitate towards if not the main dude has to be like well at least there was someone there but really in actuality there was no one there so i just felt like that was you know it threw me off just a little bit so with all that being said i gotta give this a rating a solid rating of four and a half scars guards out of five yes this is a good movie with great performances if you find yourself getting nauseous or getting some headaches with handheld movements i think uh this be cautious going into this movie a lot of handhelds back and forth but i think that just adds to the pacing and the feel of this movie and i and i enjoy the execution very much so that is it for today thank you so much for reaching to the end of this video have you seen or heard of the movie the killing of kenneth chamberlain if not it is on hbo max I highly recommend to go and check it out get an opinion for yourself come back and let me know what you thought of it down below rendered image every Thursday and Sunday nights 8 30 p.m. the link to the show is down below in the description so make sure you go and check that out I hope you're all safe and well out there and I'll see you all in the next one take care